Welcome to our first exercise, designing a simple frame. So and as our first exercise, let's perform the designing of a simple frame. A very simple structure perhaps, but that will help us to get familiar with this program's basic workflow. Now the structure that we're going to create, is a simple rectangular frame featuring a cantilever. Namely a simple frame composed by two columns and a beam. Thus let's go ahead, and choose the respective template or type of project we'll use. Or in this case, that for designing a 2D frame. Now let's begin by verifying the current unit's configuration for this project. As an example and by looking at this area, we can see that we're currently using the imperial system. Namely, feet, kips and degrees. Being the metric system the one we need to use for this first project. Thus, let's begin by looking for the tool for determining the proper configuration of the units. Or and as we've seen in the previous lesson, the one we find through this icon and which in this case is known as the Job Preferences panel. So and once in this configuration panel, let's begin by going to the correct category. Or the Units and Formats category. Since and as we have said earlier, is through this category, that we could configure the overall units of the project. So let's go ahead, and choose the type of units that we need. Or those pertaining to the metric system. And let's click on OK to accept this configuration which as a result, will change the units being considered for the project. Change that will also be reflected in this area. Now and with the units properly configured, let's continue and begin designing our concrete frame. To start things off, this frame should be composed by two columns of 4 meters, and two beams across a length of 6 meters. So let's carry on, and begin by obtaining the beams of the frame and which in this case, we can perform by using the bars tool, located in this lateral bar. Although worth noting, that we could also access this tool through the geometry menu, and as a matter of fact, many of the tools of this lateral bar, can also be accessed through the options found in these menus. Moreover, and speaking of this lateral bar, this is what we could interpret as a design sequence. Namely a basic design workflow. To illustrate this idea, we should begin by placing the bars of the structure. Followed by the configuration of the bars section. The placement of the supports of the structure. The assignment of loads. And finally, the designing of the reinforcement steel. And thus, we'll try to go through the steps involved in this general workflow, for obtaining our first structure. So let's continue and go back to this tool. Now the first thing to consider regarding the placement of bars, is that this type of structural elements, aren't first defined as neither beams nor columns. But as general structural instances. Namely, that these bars should be later defined as either columns or beams. And displaying their respective structural section. But let's return to the task at hand, and use this tool for obtaining the bars pertaining to the beams of the frame. Now these beams should be positioned at a 4 meters height while having a total length of 6 meters. As a result, the first beam should have a length of 4 meters. While the second consecutive beam, a length of 2 meters. So let's carry on, and begin by choosing the correct type of bar. Or as you may assume, the structural function of the bar. Being through this list that we could define such type of bar or function. Such as that of cables, columns, and so. Let's choose for instance a reinforced concrete beam. Since once again, we're going to first obtain the beams of the frame. And which should be located at a 4 meters height from the level 0 of the project. So and with the structural function of the bar now configured, let's continue by specifying its respective section. Or in this case, a concrete section of 30 by 60 centimeters. And for this purpose, let's click on this icon. As this will allow us to open the new section panel in where we could define a new section for our reinforced concrete beam. To start the configuration of this new section off, we should first determine its basic dimensions. Currently described in centimeters. So the first dimension, or B in this diagram, should be of 30 centimeters. While the second dimension, or H in this diagram, should be of 60 centimeters. And thus, this section's label should say 30 by 60. Of course this is a very simple section, but as you may imagine, we could use these other options for defining a different more complex shape. 
Moreover, we could even consider a reduction on the moment of inertia. Since as we know, and even more so for hot rolled profiles, this is a very important property of the section. But moving forward with the options available in this panel. We also count with the possibility of defining a specific gamma angle. Namely, a different rotation angle for the section. For the time being though, we don't need to perform further changes. So let's just add this new section to the database of this project. And close this panel. Here we've this bar's structural function and section now correctly configured. Moreover, we could now use the recently defined section throughout the remaining of our project. Now and regarding the placement of these new elements, we could do this through either clicking on the drawing area, or by entering the coordinates of both the start and end point of the beams. In this case though, we'll only use these fields as reference, for making sure that the position of both these points is correct. So let's go ahead, and determine the position of the starting point of the first beam. Or in this case the coordinate minus 4,4. Finishing on the coordinate 2, 4. And let's continue by obtaining the second consecutive beam. And whose starting point should be, of course, the coordinate 2, 4. Finishing on the coordinate 4, 4. And here we've our two beams. So let's zoom in and have a closer look at this element. Here we've the first beams of the frame. Nevertheless, and as we can see, we cannot really see their respective section or actual thickness. Let's therefore go to this bottom bar, and request the sections of the bars to be displayed in the drawing area. And let's change to a perspective view, so we can see the actual section of the beams. Now moving on, in this left area, or the Object Inspector browser. We can see the multiple objects currently present in our project as well as the multiple sub-components that may integrate those same objects. To illustrate this concept, in this list we find first the couple of bars that we've just created. Followed by the nodes present across those same bars. Now and in order to quickly identify these objects in the drawing area, we could go to this bottom bar. And request the numbers of both the bars and the nodes to be displayed in the drawing area. Now and although simple in concept, keeping track of these numbers is very important, as it will allow us to identify the position of the different relations between the bars. Such as the bars releases and supports. As well as the general boundary conditions of the structure, and potential errors in the analytical model. But let's move on, and hide the sections of the bars. So we can carry on with the designing of this simple frame. We'll continue in the next lesson.